We're going to be looking in a few minutes in Ephesians chapter 6 and starting with verse 10. But I think what we're getting ready to read is very, very pertinent to what is going on in this very day. 20 years ago, we were attacked by a group of Saudi Arabians who came over to this country on a student visa, learned how to fly airplanes, and then they ran them into the towers and into the Pentagon and so forth and so on. The globalist George W. Bush did nothing whatsoever about it but hurry a bunch of Saudi Arabians that night onto a plane and got them out of the country. You can look it up, I'm telling the truth. Then he went and attacked the country, it didn't have anything to do with it. All along, people didn't know. Then they passed a law called the Patriot Act that was neither. And we handed half of our rights away to a globalist leftist president and a government. That's a hard pill to swallow. But George Bush was no friend of this country's. He won't. 20 years later, after the rest of the presidents, other than Trump, welcomed the enemy into our land and gave them high positions in government, and that's the reason they wanted Trump out of there, because he would have no part of it. Now we've been under attack by Red China with a disease that has killed probably a hundred times more people than the Twin Towers falling. Yeah. And what have we done about that? We've handed the rest of our rights over to a Marxist president by the name of Joe Biden. Yeah. And so right now we're living in very, very dangerous, troubled times. The so-called president that we've got now is ordering us to go get injections that a lot of us know nothing about and making it mandatory. And now there are grocery stores in our country that won't even let you buy groceries unless you got your papers. You cannot go to restaurants. You cannot go to ball games. You cannot go anywhere. Do not tell me for one second that this world is not ready for the mark of the beast. It is. It's ready. This is a test run, people. So what do we as Christians, what do we do while we are stuck here on this earth facing all of this stuff that's, and it's mainly aimed at us. Churches are shutting down and hiding and ducking. What do we do? Well, Paul saw it coming. He even talked about what it was going to be like in the end times, and he described it to the T. We're right in the middle of it. So we need to be equipped. Paul says in verse number 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is no time to wimp out. This is no time to be afraid. This is the time where you've got to be strong. You've got to be strong or, or you're just going to fold. And your strength comes only from the Lord. People have got to start keeping their eyes on him right now. Then he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And let me tell you something, they are plentiful. The number one trick that the devil uses is convince most of the world that he don't even exist. So they, of course, they give in to everything he says because they don't even think, they don't even think he's real. That's how he gets by with it. He's got more schemes than you could possibly imagine. But you've got to put the whole armor on. 
Now when a soldier goes out to combat, he puts everything on because every piece of armor is essential. You can put everything else on but one part and still get blown away. And so when you start every day, you need to put on the whole armor of God to go out there and to fight the forces of evil that are coming towards you. Listen to more what he says here. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, I, I wish we did. I honestly wish we did because we could whip them real easy. Yeah. We, know, we could. I bet there's enough hardware in this church right here to stand off half of an army. Yeah. I could walk up and down the aisles and peek over in pocketbooks and look under the shirts and even on the outside and see all kinds of goodies. But listen to this, our enemy is not really flesh and blood. Even though it manifests itself in flesh and blood. But it's against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are demonic spirits everywhere. There are fallen angels in the heavens that are fighting against us. There are demonic spirits down here that are fighting against us. And whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, if you're a child of God, you are at war. And a good soldier is trained and knows who the enemy is and knows what to do. And we're fighting all of those powers, but the Holy Spirit that lives within us gives us the strength to do that. So he said, so wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We, folks, in case you haven't realized it yet, here's news, we're in the evil day. It's right here. It's now. It's not coming later. We're right smack in the middle of the evil day. And my goodness, beloved friends, if you can't see that, you truly are lost. You need the Holy Spirit in you to tell you what's going on. If you're not seeing it yet. It said in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Folks, we prayed, we've preached, we've voted, we've done everything. It's time now to stand. It's time now to separate the men from the boys and the girls from the women. It's time to stand and say no more. We stand right here and right now. We're not going to budge anymore. But if you make that statement, you better have your armor on. What's the thing about walking softly and carrying a big stick? Well, you better have that stick ready before you start talking. Because the moment you decide to make a stand, the devil is coming after you. He's coming after you whether you do or not. So you better be ready to fight when he comes. Now he's going to go over some of the weapons of war, some of the armor, and he said, stand therefore having your loins girt with truth. I love that old English way of putting it. Have you ever seen a weightlifter? They will take a belt and gird it around them before they lift weights. So this is what it looks like when you forget to wear your belt and you, you know. Well anyway, I probably need to start wearing one from now on. My living girdle died this morning. Anyway, it gives you strength inner from your core and you're able to lift and you're able to fight and all soldiers would put one of those belts on and they would tuck their robes or whatever it was or tunics that they were wearing in there so they wouldn't step on them when they were fighting and it gave them extra strength and the thing that gives you the strength is truth it's time for the church to start swallowing some truth 
instead of all this sugar that they've been fed so many years in all the other churches where they grin and say, it's all going to be all right, just buy my book. Come on, people. There was an idiot on that inspiration camp meeting. That's the most blasphemous thing I've ever seen in my life. And the man said, so what if you can't even afford a kitchen table? Send me $1,000. You know, that, don't even get me started. Don't get me started. Because not one word of, that's said on that program is truth. Not one word. We need the truth as Christians. And truth can only be found in the Word of God. And then, having on the breastplate of righteousness, that's your, one, that's your armored vest, a breastplate that covers the vitals, it covers your heart. And it has to be, you have to be covered in righteousness. I sometimes stand and think about my own righteousness and what it looks like in front of God and it's very shameful. It's awful because there's nothing I can do to look righteous in front of God and there's nothing you can do to look righteous in front of God except allow yourself to be covered by the blood of Christ. When he looks at you and sees the blood, you are declared righteous. And he does not see us as we really are. And you need to put everything in your life under the blood of Jesus Christ when you start today. Put your family under the blood. Put your friends under the blood. Put your church under the blood. Put yourself under the blood. That's your breastplate of righteousness. And you should have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace that literally means everywhere you walk you need to share the gospel and quit back peddling when somebody confronts you when you're telling them the truth you keep telling them the truth. You know the shoes that the Roman soldiers, and that's what he's talking about here, the outfit of a Roman soldier, they had cleats on the bottom of them that was made only for going forward and it would keep you from sliding backwards because it would dig into the ground. There is no backing up for us any longer, folks. That needs to go and that needs to go right now. We need to stand our ground and tell it like it is and give out the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Oh my Lord, I don't even know where I'd start. I, I recently was watching one of the new Star Trek movies. Now, I don't mean to get too spiritual here, but I'm going to try. I see Roger back there praising God. Okay. Now, they were fighting an enemy that had this massive ship. And he was taking out all of the Federation ships and all that. And what he would do when he would go to combat, he would scream at his men, fire everything! And you never seen so much stuff coming out of that ship in your life. That's what the devil's doing to us right now. He, for many centuries, he'd hit us with this and hit us with that. But, even, but my mother used to tell me about it and the Bible tells me about it that the devil, when he sees that he has but a short time, will step it up. Right now the devil knows that it's almost over for him. And so he's screaming to all of his minions, fire everything. And it looks like everything in the world is coming at us right now. Have you ever seen a time in history where you have been under attack at such a level? Where the church has been under attack at such a level? I mean, wham, wham, wham. You don't even have time to get your breath. When here comes another one and another one, we're getting attacks on our family, attacks on our church, attacks on our jobs, attacks on us personally, and everything the devil can fire at you is coming, folks. The, the, the atmosphere is filled with fiery darts. Yeah. 
the fiery darts of fear. The, and here's another one he's using, the fiery darts of doubt. Yeah. Oh, we come to church and we get all fired up and yeah, man, we're going to stand on the rock. We're going to stand on the word. And then something comes along and man, we start, whoa, wait a minute. Is God going to really look out for me? What do I need to do? You know, you want to see what it looks like? Go in Walmart one day and sneeze out real loud. <laughs> They hit the deck like there's machine gun fire coming in there. People are horrified. We are living totally under siege and we can't even stop to get our breath. So you need to be ready for the fiery darts of the wicked by holding up your shield of faith. You've got to have faith that God's going to see you through no matter what. Now, you want to finally get to the end of your faith? You've got to stand like Job and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. When you get to that point, you're ready to fight. Because you might be slain in it. But you've got to trust in him no matter what. The fiery darts of the wicked. Man, he is firing everything. And take the helmet of salvation. That protects your head. That protects your brain. You can't fight with a bullet in your head. Salvation is the most important thing of all this armor. Your helmet. You go nowhere without your helmet on. You can wear the shields and the breastplates and have your loins girt, but if you ain't saved, it ain't going to do you a bit of good. You must be born again. You must put your trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone to be saved. Being saved is not jumping through all these different hoops and joining this and joining that. It's completely trusting Christ. And let me tell you something, folks. When you go out your door in the morning to face the world, you better trust in Christ. You better. And now we're coming to one of my favorites. The sword of the Spirit. What did people fight with in those days when Paul was writing? Sword. Now I happen to be a a weapons nut. Everybody knows me. Now, many of y'all are walking around with them little old 22 AR-15s and hang on a minute. Why have a 22 when you can have a Chicago typewriter? <laughs> this thing shoots 45s. And you might get hit with an arrow with the AR-15, but this is a freight train coming at you right here. And uh, anyway, and if I thought that I was going to war against flesh and blood, I'd reach for something like that. But that right there, as much as I don't mind walking in the middle of the woods at night with that in my hand, not afraid at all. It don't do no good against the spirit world. Don't do a bit of good. Let me tell you what we'll do. This right here. This is the most powerful weapon known to man. Way more powerful than my Chicago typewriter. My chopper. Way, way more powerful. As a matter of fact, the Marxists know that. They are more afraid of you having a copy of the word of God yeah. than having that gun right there. They are far more terrified of you because this thing right here will not only defend you against every dart coming at you, it will set you free. It will protect you. It will tell you everything to do. For many years in the communist bloc nations, they would stop cars at the border and they would ask them two questions and a friend of mine who escaped from over there told me they said do you have a gun and do you have a bible and if you had either one you were going to prison 
people would take uh, and make an a, a inner shell inside of a car and carry hundreds of Bibles in them to get them across the border because once the people started reading this, they were set free and they were not afraid of the Marxist anymore. Amen. When the Iron Curtain fell, a group of missionaries were welcomed in Moscow years ago and they told this to the missionaries. They called them to come to their classrooms, to their public school classrooms, and they said for 70 years we were told that there is no God and that God cannot do anything for us. Would you please come in our classrooms and teach our children about God? Because they knew how powerful this was right here. There is no weapon on earth more powerful than that. But it's a sword. It's the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Here's the problem. You got people swinging wildly with it. You aim this chopper right here at the wrong thing, you're gonna hit the wrong thing. You have to practice with your sword. You have to practice with your weapon all over and over and over constantly to become good with it, to hit your target. And so it's so important that you read and study the Word of God because you're going to need it more and more and more in the days to come. You'll be approached by atheists and cults and Marxists and everybody trying to put you down and then there's going to be people coming to you wanting hope, wanting to know what the truth is. Well, if you haven't read this, you're not going to be able to tell them. And so you learn how to swing this and the devil will back up really, really fast from you. And finally, prayer. If people only understood how powerful prayer really and truly is, you would spend more time kneeling before the Lord. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What does that mean? We need to pray for each other constantly. There are many of you sitting here this morning simply because somebody prayed for you. You may not know it. You may not know why you're here. I'll tell you why you're here. Somebody prayed you here. And the reason that you survived is because people got hold of God and you prayed for them. Prayer is such a very powerful thing. I would rather that more people fill up a prayer meeting than a Sunday morning service. I really do. We make that available every week to just come and sit there before the Lord listen to the prayer request and pray or whatever, you can just sit there. But we need to pray. So often, we go for every other form of defense when we could use prayer. I always use the analogy of the horror movies that come on TV, the old ones, the real old horror movies. And it would show somebody sitting by a fireplace in a big mansion somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, roaring fire, and all of a sudden, they hear a noise outside. Okay, well, sitting over top of the mantle, over the fireplace, is a 10-gauge double-barrel shotgun. But what does the idiot in the movie do? He reaches for a poker. And he goes outside with a lantern and a poker, chunking the bushes to see what that thing is. All the while, that 10 gauge is sitting back there. I ain't stupid. Y'all saw what I had there? I got something bigger than that when I go down in the woods looking for a noise at night, if I have to go out. But they're out there with that lantern, and they're poking. And then the next scene, you hear this blood curdling scream, and the lantern is laying on the ground. When all along, if he had to have gone out there, he could have done it. And this, Listen carefully. We do the same thing. We have a problem come along and we freak out and we go running for this and running for that to help us when all we got to do is stop and pray. 
reach up over the mantle and get that 10 gauge double barrel prayer and go deal with it then but we don't so often we go poking around in the woods with the poker of human reasoning trying to figure it out rather than use that powerful weapon of prayer the armor of God it is so very important that you put all of it on not just most of it but all of it you've got to pray you've got to have the truth you've got to have faith you've got to have salvation you've got to have your sword ready be a well-equipped soldier in the armies of the living God because folks we're going to need it in these days that are upon us and days to come I do not believe it will be long at all based on everything that I have read in my Bible that says has things that have to happen before Jesus comes secretly for his church I think it's all happened it's just a matter of time when God the Father tells God the Son go get your bride and bring her home many of our loved ones that have gone on before us we're going to see them really soon I really believe that I do not think it's going to be long before we're going to be reunited with all of our family and friends that have gone on to glory but in the meantime we got to make our stand here this is no time to run no time to hide no time to fold up no time to live in fear you don't need to live in fear you can make your stand and do it with your sword in your hand when you do it and put your armor on and put your faith in God and as I said before let's be a good soldier in the armies of the living God